Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Amy. Um, a little bit different than most of you here. I generally work in the for-profit space, and um, I'm a little int intrigued. I feel like folks here probably know a lot more about this than I do, but I'm here to talk a little bit about the experience that we had with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and the Latino Leadership Institute. As Jim mentioned, I'm a corporate lawyer, and most days I'm doing contracts and helping people buy and sell businesses. But I've also been the past president of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I'm a member of the current board, and I like to tell people my claim to fame is that I hired our current executive director, Carlos Ramirez, who's doing a great job. I want to talk to you today about how we came up with the Latino Leadership Institute. In particular, you know, in listening to what some other folks here had to say, particularly um, Dee and others, how you can bring that potentially to bear in your nonprofit organization. And I think the key insight for us as we developed the program was really thinking about young professionals, and this is really from a volunteer perspective, not from a within your staff perspective, but thinking about them as clients, as potential clients for us. And, and as an attorney, that comes naturally because I deal with clients all the time, but I think it was a little bit different for our organization to think about potential volunteers as folks that we would serve in a way. And as we, as we, as we looked out there in the community, you know, we, we saw several needs. Uh, you know, first of all, as you think about the Hispanic community in this, in this uh, community, it's a growing community. There's, it's overall a small population, but it's, it's growing. And we have for this community, as we do a lot of other minorities, several programs in place that help folks make the transition from you know, youth to high school to college. But then what happens when you graduate? What happens when you actually get here, right? And how do you make that transition from being a young professional to being a seasoned professional? And what we saw was a real need. And um, when we think about this, this client-based approach, we thought about, okay, well, what do these, what do these folks need, right? I mean, what, are they, what are they really searching for? And it's really not surprising. There's nothing earth-shattering about what I'm going to tell you. But it, it, I think framing it that way helps inform the discussion. So when we looked at it, we saw the following. We saw, okay, they're looking to advance themselves in their careers. They're looking to develop and build their personal networks and relationships. And they're looking to fulfill some higher purpose in life. So you probably already do this kind of thing with your current board members and folks that sit on your, on your team. You guys do this analysis where you sit around and you say, what's everybody getting out of the organization? How do we make that happen? And how do we advance our board? But have you really thought about that in the context of the young folks? Or are they, are they on the young board that kind of does a happy hour here or there and doesn't really do a whole lot, doesn't have a whole lot of responsibility? <laughs> Maybe that sounds familiar. <laughs> so. So when, let's talk about career advancement. So at the basic level, what, we were trying, what we're trying to offer, what I think you, you might want to think about is the following, developing interpersonal skills and working on a team, basic core competency. And so how are your young professionals involved in building that? Leadership, are they given real responsibility to grow and develop and build a program within your organization? Do they have things like P&L and budgetary responsibility for the program? And I'm talking like a business person, but it's business, right? Um, but the, the second piece that I want to talk about is also um, of, of skill development is management buy-in. And we found this one to be particularly effective for our young professionals. Management buy-in means that the young professional's manager or someone at that organization knows of the involvement and values the involvement. And that can happen in a lot of different ways. But the bottom line is that the, man, the young professional sees that reflected in their performance review, right? They see that as part of their growth within their current job. So it can happen very simply. Number one, you've got a senior, uh, senior board member, and they're bringing in somebody else from their organization. That's going to happen automatically. Uh, number two, you've got a relationship with your executive director and some senior executive who may not be involved at your organization directly, but there's that relationship there, and there's the, there's the two-way communication about the positive things that that young professional is doing at your organization. And the third part is even just simply writing a note to that person's manager saying, hey, you know, Bob, Sue, Fred, Castor, you know, they did a great job and we're happy to have them on our board and our young professional organization evolved. When you do those tie-ins, that really increases people's involvement. Let's talk a little bit about uh, networking and organizations. Part of the re rationalization for the, for the Latino Leadership Institute was recognition that Hispanics in St. Louis are typically the not from here crowd. I, I call people, we're the not from here crowd. I didn't go to high school here, I'm not from here. Um, and so <laughs> becoming, Becoming a part of this community is very important. Making St. Louis feel like home is very important because if it doesn't feel like home, you're more likely to leave, particularly young folks, right? Because I would rather just go home to 
where my family is, to where I know more people, I don't feel like I know anybody here. So, the <laughs> so there's, that's real, right? I mean, I, personally, uh, for the first five years, my wife was always telling me, why are we here? You know, I don't, I don't wanna be here, let's move. Doesn't say that anymore. Um, but how do you build that sense of belonging, those friendships? We saw that need, and that was part of the realization of the program. And if you all think about it, I mean, somebody mentioned three quarter of us being Leadership St. Louis graduates. I don't know what the number is, but when I think about the program, right, Joy, I think about the people I met, right? And at the end, that's what you really have is each other, right? I mean, you, we learned some things. We, we, our eyes were opened in a lot of ways to St. Louis community and the, the challenges that the region faces. But, but, but at the end of it, we all, we all have this thing in common. You meet people, you have each other. So let's talk lastly about the, the last thing I wanted to mention was higher purpose. I think everyone is intrinsically feels a need to fulfill some higher purpose. And I think the young in particular, you know, we're restless. We're trying to find what that is for us. Maybe the folks in nonprofits have already figured it out. And the connection you want to make is tying your, your self-fulfillment in your mission at your nonprofit to that younger person, right? Help show them how you're fulfilling that need within yourself by what your organization is doing. And I think that is not as complicated for probably most of the folks in the room. It's just simply, you would imagine, having passion for what you do. And, and that can be infectious. So I want to talk a little bit about the LOI because we, we, there was some mention about how there's maybe a lack of leadership programs in St. Louis. And I think that's probably right. And unknowingly, that's how we created this program. And so a little bit about what it is uh, and how it is and, and, and why we're doing it and some results. So real quickly, as was mentioned, it's a skills-based leadership training program focused on young Hispanic professionals. What that means is that we're, we're focusing on people who are early stage professionals. They're not the seasoned folks yet, and, and we're offering skills. And we're doing it through uh, a nine month program, one day a month, experiential based learning. Uh, we've developed a curriculum that focuses on core competencies like personal branding, effective communication, financial analysis. And we're putting this cohort together as a small group of, of folks. It's diverse, okay, because a lot of people don't appreciate the diversity within the Latino community. Uh, we have several different nations. We have uh, our nationalities involved. We have men, we have women, and we have um, folks from different walks of life, both for-profit, small business, and nonprofit. In fact, uh, this year we had, or first, we've done for two years now, our first year we had the, uh, a gentleman from the American Red Cross, and this year we've got the head of the Spanish school at the St. Louis Language Immersion Schools that just graduated from our program. We've had good nonprofit involvement. And so what we're shooting for here is, is that skills development, but the other piece that we're shooting for, as I mentioned, that management buy-in, management managers have to be on board. And secondly, or, or lastly, that community aspect as well. One of the rationales for the program, as I'm sure you're all aware, is the lack of available talent, particularly amongst the Hispanic community, to serve on your boards. And, and recognizing that lack of talent and thinking about how do we grow that talent, well, you know, 20 years from now is too late. So we're starting now with the folks today so that in 20 years, you've got that group of seasoned professionals who are able to go out and serve on your boards. And we're trying to convince them that being involved is good for them and it's good for the community. And of course, it'll make them feel like St. Louis is home. So let's talk a little bit about, and just want to talk briefly about the funding model, because I think that's important implementation perspective. How could an organization like ours with a budget at the time of less than 200,000 pull this off? And, um, and how you might be able to do it or team up to do it, and uh, a couple of the success stories that we've had. Uh, quickly, our funding model is based on low tuition because we did not want that to be a barrier for anybody. And, and then secondly, um, sponsorship. So we, we've, we've gone around and we've, we've gone to folks like Washington University, who's a sponsor, St. Louis University. Um, we've gone to Centene, who's our title sponsor and provided the foundational support. And they, they have funded the program for us. Um, Really, and the tuition is really from a, it's really for commitment, and not for funding. Uh, and if and we've never turned anyone away, and I doubt we ever will for, for, for tuition. And then let's uh, just briefly want to mention results. So in our first year, we had a young gentleman who's a, he's a, a marketing guy. He's from Mexico. He's not a U.S. citizen yet, but he's here on a work visa. He moves to St. Louis, relocates himself, he and his wife, uh, to work for a company that's doing a lot of business with AB. Uh, about two, three months after he gets here, they lose the client. He's out of a job, and his wife is expecting. So they have to figure out 
what they're going to do, but through his connections with our program, because he had just started it at the time, we were able to, ironically enough, find him a job at AB. And last I spoke with him a few months ago, he was just working on the kickoff of Black Crown beer, which is a great beer product. You should all try it. And, uh, <laughs> and very happy and working hard and, and enjoying St. Louis and making St. Louis his home. And I suspect and I hope that they will stay. Second success story comes from this year's class. And our board team that's in charge of the program went to visit uh, one, of the, one of the sessions to see what it was like, experience what the students are experiencing, understand what they're going through. And one of the members of our board, she asked, just sort of a round table, say, what are you getting out of this program? What is it meant to you? How is this going? And one of the, one of the class members raised her hand and she said, you know, and she's at Wells Fargo, and she says, you know, we get these uh, semi-annual reviews and in my reviews in the past, communications has always been listed as, as something I need to work on and I need to improve. Um, and now since I've been in the program, uh, I, in my last review, it was noted as a positive for me. And now it's seen as a strength. And I'm telling you, it's like tears coming to eyes. I mean, we were so happy and so excited. So I think the bottom line is that the programs do work. They are forming relationships with each other, which will hopefully keep them here. And hopefully, knock on wood, we're developing leaders so that in 20 years, we've got some seasoned folks that can go out there and serve on boards.